Hey, so uh, if you talk to anybody from the first service, you know I'm a little amped up today. So I just want to, to kind of warn you in advance. Um, but by, by way of doing that, welcome to September. Here at September 1st, first Sunday in September, we're celebrating communion. I didn't realize it was the first Sunday in September. Uh, and and De- Debbie reminded me, I said, it's not the first Sunday of September. She said, oh yeah, it is. And I'm like, no, it's not. And you know, it's one of those stupid things. Why do we argue about things that are factual, right? All you have to do is say, hey, Google, <laughs> what's the data? <laughs> you know, but anyway, we're human beings, and so we, we do stuff like that. I even forgot that, yes, that, that, that tomorrow is Labor Day. And we, we were up north for a couple days, and I'm driving back, and I'm like, why didn't I get someone to fill in on Labor Day? I could have had three extra days. Ah! Anyway, um, but welcome to September. Do you love September? It's when things start to get cool. Our air conditioning has been out. You don't like September because it starts to get cold and you can't ski as much. Yeah. Does she whine a lot about skiing? <laughs> okay, let's not go there. Sorry. Okay, so all of this by way of saying you do not want to fall asleep in this morning's message. So uh, some, someone sent me uh, this little thing on, on Instagram. Uh, I fell asleep in church, then I heard, stand up, so I stood up, and people clapped. The pastor said, who else will give $2,000? <laughs> so you don't want to fall asleep today because I'm in that mode, you know. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking for, for other things. But we have been in, uh, in the book of Revelation, and today's message is going to be pure application. Uh, we're going to read just a passage that we've already read, and we're going to just make application after application after application of it. And um, it's, it happens to be with the sixth of seventh uh, postcards coming from Revelation chapter 3, beginning at verse 7. And really, this, uh, this one could be titled, in my mind, uh, Dear River Hills. Uh, it starts like this, uh, to the angel of the church, let's just say it, to the angel of the church at River Hills. Okay. These are the wood of these are the woods. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. Will you say these words with me? What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, you say these with me? I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And you know, this church of Philadelphia was a lot like us. I mean, they, they, were, they were a smaller church compared to their, their overall society that they were ministering in. And so uh, Jesus continues by saying, I know that you have little strength. You know, I know that you've been dealing with, with rebuilding the city. I know that you have your, your family and your work. And I know that you've, you've been, been drawn by the grace of God into this thing called the kingdom of God. And you, you have this vision for, for what, what the kingdom of God can be and what the church can be. And I know that's exhausting sometimes. I know you have little strength. Yet you've kept my word and have not denied my name. Lord God, I pray that you will help us to make application of this today. And uh, those things, God, that are, uh, are unnecessary, I pray, would just fall away. But God, I would pray that your Holy Spirit would drive home some, some open doors for each one of us. God, give us eyes to see doors that you are opening in our lives. And we'll give you the credit for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to take a look around this room right now. Because the room that you're sitting in, the building that this room is in, is evidence that God opens doors that, what's the rest of that say? God opens doors that, that no one can shut. And I believe that God planted this idea in one of the, the, the women from the Black Sox Society, if you know that, that group here in, in town. Um, at least, I don't know if that's a condescending name or what, I mean it with all reverence, uh, these, these uh these families and these women in particular are very modest in their dress. They are, they are Jesus followers. We have shared our worship space with them in the past when we were over at the River Arts Center. We made room for them uh, and, and did other things when they needed uh, the space that, that we were in. I, I respect these, these women. And one of them used to sit right, uh, right about where Rita is sitting right now at a welcome desk that was built uh, of, well, we built our coffee bar off that welcome desk. But she, she used to present this open door to me. 
and she said, you know, River Hills needs a place to call home. And she'd, she'd slide this notebook at me, which was the, the sales brochure. It's about that thick for, for this building. And I'd, I'd push it back and say, no, no, that's not for us. That's not for us. And, you know, God was opening a door. And I tried to shut it. And then one day, it was like, oh, we need to do this. And then, then the, the political powers that be tried to shut that door. But what do we know about doors? If God opens them, ain't nobody going to shut them. And so we, we ended up with a federal judge uh, backing up God's word. And he said, ain't nobody going to shut River Hills out of worshiping in that space. And lo and behold, we were able to worship in that space, but not before someone else tried to shut that door. And a bank tried to shut the door saying, we don't want to be embroiled in that political controversy. And so we're shutting that door. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to pull your financing 48 hours before we're supposed to come in here. And then through prayer and worship that we were having at church that night, Debbie got a word from God and it was, what are you turning to the world for when you should be turning to the household of faith. And within 48 hours, we raised $460,000 in cash as short-term loans to make this building a reality. You see, this place is evidence that when God opens doors, nobody can shut them. I couldn't shut it. The political powers couldn't shut it. The bank couldn't shut it. God opened it, and here we are. Isn't that cool? Yay, God, you know? And so when, when I read these words, I've placed before you a door that no one can shut. I know I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in our corporate life. And I, I just want to keep underscoring that for us because I think it's a really, really important thing. Now, I want to go through a number of open doors. Now, these might be doors that are opening for you. They might be doors that are closed to you. But the Holy Spirit's going to have to talk to you about that, okay? And one of the things that, uh, that I know that God is opening for us is the op the, an, a door of connection groups. And this past summer, uh, we've been talking about this, and, and we realize that just calling something a Bible study doesn't adequately describe what happens in a small group. And calling something a small group sounds like, well, it sounds small. And, um, and so... People in our world, particularly post-COVID, need connection. We are, we are some of the most disconnected people, it seems, in the history of, of my life. And part of it has to do with social media. Part of it has to do with, with COVID. Part of it has to do with our, our, our political climate, for, for whatever reason. And so we need, and, and I'm trying to change the language around here. So don't talk about Bible studies. Don't talk about, about small groups. Let's talk about connection groups. Yeah, let, let's invite one another into connection and one of the things that we're doing, uh, David mentioned earlier, is uh, a group for people who might be, be newer and you're, you're trying to explore your, your faith. And maybe you've never talked about, about faith, but you want to, to, to learn how to do that. And so we have a group that's just for you, and I'm going to show you a little trailer of what that group is going to be like. And uh, here we go. So when was the last time you were really thirsty? Well, is it possible that all of us have within our souls a deep desire that is meant to be fulfilled, but that nothing in this world 
can ultimately satisfy? Now, I don't pretend to understand this. I'm not sure I can explain it, but I have experienced this power in my life. And I know that once you experience this power, once you connect to it, your life will never be the same again. And so that's H2O, A Journey of Faith, and I'd like to uh, invite you to that. Maybe that's, that's a door that's, that's opening for you. Another connection group offering that we are making this, uh, this fall, and this is being delayed. Uh, women, this, is, this pertains to you. This is being delayed by a week. It was supposed to start this Thursday, uh, but by special request, it's uh, starting a week later on September 12th. And that's uh, called Luke in the Land. Now, part of this is, is, uh, is not new, but then there's something about this that's very new. Part that's not new is that it's going to meet on Thursdays, uh, late morning, and uh, Chris Haig. Chris, will you stand up? Um, Chris is leading that, and if you want to talk more about Chris to find out more about that group, uh, she's right back there in the corner. And it was her and her husband Steve's anniversary this, uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday? Someone said today. They're, they're, they're misinformed. I don't know who said that. Um, but how many years, Steve? You better get it right. How many? Wow. Cool. Congratulations. And uh, we are so thankful for you guys. So Chris is going to be leading that. Pretty amazing. Happy birthday, Sawyer. Where are you? I think he, oh, you're double dipping. You got the sunglasses back on. And no, it's not because it was his birthday yesterday. I was informed it was not a rough night. He has allergies, so just so you know. But what's so cool about this was, uh, was an open door. And I approached someone uh, saying, you know, back in the day, we used to take our, our women's group that was done in the morning and we offered it in the evening. Would you be willing to do that? And Tanya Bear said, ah! Oh, I've wanted to do something just like that. And if you know how excitable she, she can be, it's so great. See, and she laughs. Listen to her. It's so great. But she, um, so starting on, on the 12th. Hey, everyone. Uh, no, 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 no. We are here in the garden this of This is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to be. This oh, pff, fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So starting on the 12th, we're going to offer a morning session of this and an evening session of this. Now, I thought, that when we did this, it was genius. Lori Gary, let's give a hand to Lori Gary. She, she was genius because she started doing this, one for, for uh, women who were working in the home and in the community and who, who could attend in the morning. But then there are those who are working out of the home and out of the community who can't. And uh, so she started uh, two groups. And then then I think this was a closed door. But then we got this idea, maybe, maybe we could offer it three times, morning, afternoon, and night. And did, did, did you ever pull that one off? Once, right? And, and she, she's like, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> because you don't know where you are. I mean, it's like, did I say that already or didn't I? And, and, uh, but in any case, we're starting a second group. Tanya Bear is going to be leading that. Tanya, will you stand up real quick? Uh, thank you, Tanya. And if you're interested in either of those groups, there are signups, and I see that Tanya you already have a few signed up, so that's, uh, that's cool. Now, here's what the group is about. Hey, everyone. We are here in the Garden of Gethsemane this morning. And as I look back, you can see this very ancient and old olive tree here on the Mount of Olives. You know, for so many years, I've been able to serve as a bridge as a Bible teacher bringing teams from the United States over to the land of Israel to study the stories of the Bible in the very geographic places where they happened. And now, in Luke and the Land, I get to be a bridge in reverse. I want to try to bring Israel to you, right in your own churches, right in your own living room as you sit at your very own coffee table. 
I tell people all the time that the Bible is the best and the truest story that has ever been told. These things happened and we're getting ready to journey through the Gospel of Luke as we travel through the land of Israel, getting to know Jesus better than we've ever known him before. Join me for this adventure and for this journey. And so that journey will be starting again Thursday, September 12th, offered both morning and the evening. And if you're interested, there is a sign up out there. Connection groups are, are great open doors. I had a, uh, uh, a few people approach me last year and they said, hey, we're, we're looking for a group that we could uh, be a part of. And um, here's, here's what, what we'd like. And I, I said, man, I'd like that too. And out of that grew something that's called the fourth quarter. And the fourth quarter is a connection group that's uh, for people who are in the fourth quarter of life. Now, that might sound kind of ominous to you, uh, but it's a great time uh, because it's an intense time. And if you're into football, by the way, the fourth quarter yesterday was awesome. Uh, and uh, before 108,500 people, Notre Dame brought it to... What are you laughing at? Texas A&M at College Station, New York. Uh, but in any case, um, so we, 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 we put together this, this, this group uh, called, called the Fourth Quarter. And if, if you're looking at retiring soon or if you're in the throes of retirement, you're, you're there. Uh, this, this has been a great group. And it's at the point where uh, we really need to raise up another leader in this group. So uh, if you're interested in being a part of another fourth quarter group, we, we, have, we have the curriculum nailed. Um, Debbie and I uh, kind of wrote it through some other writings, and uh, we have a bunch of different things. Um, it's, been, it's been, this might sound arrogant, but it's been life-changing for some of the folks in the group. So I want you to, uh, to think about that, and if you're interested, um, talk to me. All right. There is another open door, and that is the open door of what we call Celebration Sunday. And it's coming up at, uh, it's at Spirit Lake, a.k.a. Devil's Lake. Uh, and the reason we rename it, because it's just too weird to baptize people in a lake named after Satan. So, uh, but that being the case, uh, when we have people who have made a decision uh, for baptism, we, uh, we, we baptize them at Celebration Sunday. And so let, let me just take a moment and explain what, what baptism is, because that is an open door. You see, uh, in, in Scripture, uh, in one of the most famous sermons ever preached, it's in Acts chapter 2, the Apostle Peter concludes uh, with these words saying, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both the boss and the hope of your life. And when the people heard this whole thing, you can read it in Acts chapter 2. When, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, so what, what should we do? And the apostle Peter responded saying, Turn. You know, turn your life. You, two, you turns are encouraged in this thing. Make a U-turn and be baptized, every one of you. Now, what, what, what does that even mean? It sounds, it sounds weird. Some, someone else, after I had mentioned something about Notre Dame, asked if I had been drinking the Kool-Aid. And um, yes, I have. And, uh, but I think for a lot of people, this idea of baptism and drinking the Kool-Aid are, are kind of hand in hand. But let, let, let me explain to you. Uh, every one of you has, has had a baptizo I used to, along with my siblings, have baptizos on, on Saturday night. Uh, today, we all take showers almost on a daily basis. And, but back in the day, we only took a bath like once a week. Can you imagine what a bunch of 11-year-old boys smelled like after that? Anyway, that's just what we did. My parents grew up through the Depression, and that's what we did. But um, so baptizo simply means to immerse. And, and what it is... It's an outward sign that you have made a decision to take Jesus at his word when he says, come and follow me. Remember earlier we were reading from Philippians and uh, uh, it, 
it says, don't be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace that passes understanding will fill you. And Jesus said something very similar. He said, for, for those of you who are tired and worn out, burned out on, on religion, burned out on, 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 on the world, lay your burdens on me. Come and follow me. And I will release you from this. And as a sign that we've done that, we do this, this very countercultural thing of allowing someone to to immerse us in water. And it's, it's a sign that, that we, we have died to the old way of living and we are now living in a new light. We are now living in a new way, the way of following Jesus. And that's what it is. Now, I get it. Some of us were, were baptized early on. And that's cool. If you feel that that wasn't your decision and you feel that it needs to be your decision... Talk to me, okay? But don't criticize someone if they were baptized early on because sometimes our birthday celebrations are ahead of time and sometimes our birthday celebrations are a little bit after and the grace of God is the same. And what we're celebrating is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what baptism is about and I want to encourage you, this is an open door for you to do like what our drummer Sawyer did last year uh, by, by being baptized. And you can see his dad and his, uh, his worship leader uh, were, were out there. And uh, actually, he's dating his daughter. And so if anyone wanted to you know, bury him under the water, it would be this guy, right? But, but it, wasn't it a cool thing to be able to, to baptize your son, to be able... Yeah, no. And this is what we're about here at River Hill. So I just want to encourage you to consider walking through that door. It is a door that's open to you. Let me mention another door that's open to you. And that's the door of God's word and particularly the New Testament. A bunch of people in River Hills have been uh, doing a daily Bible reading in order to read through the, the entire Bible chronologically in the course of one year. And chronologically means that it's not from, from page one to page 2000, but it is, uh, it, it's taken in the chronological order that is represented. And so sometimes you're, you're jumping around. But Debbie and I were talking about this, and it occurred to us that on like September 28th, everyone's done with the Old Testament. And guess what comes after the Old Testament? Nah. The New Testament, and so you have an opportunity to jump in on this. And what Debbie does is every evening she sends out a text with the readings for, for tomorrow's day. For, so if you, if you like to read in the morning, you can do it in the morning. If you like to do it at lunch, you have it. If you like to do it in the evening, whatever. But by, from September, call it the 28th, I'm not sure what the exact date is, uh, to December 31st. So September 28th through December 31st, you will have read through the entire uh, uh, New Testament, which is, are four different renditions of the story, uh, the, the biography, if you will, of, of Jesus, the story of how the church started and spread throughout the world, and then a series of letters which were written as instruction, both personal and to those churches, and then finally, the revealing of Jesus Christ, the revelation that we are studying right now. So if you're interested in studying those 27 books and reading through them uh, in the course of those uh, three and change months, um, there is a, uh, a sheet you can sign up on the back and we just need to know your cell number so that Debbie can text those things to you. Uh, but that is an open door. It's an open door to do something maybe you've never done before. And as Christy McClellan just said, I believe that, that the Bible is true and it's transformative. And, and you can uh, experience that as well. So read through it and wrap it up by December 31st. Now, Sydney Sandler, your guy's youngest daughter, and uh, you, you, you hang out with, with the boyfriends. That, that's a cool thing. I, I like to hang out with the boyfriends, too. Austin is dating Sydney. But she, she, uh, she called me the other day, and she says, I have a problem. I said, what's the problem? 
And she said, the problem is that, that we, have, we have too many kids in the back. And, and we, we don't have enough people to watch them. She said, I, 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 had, I had like 25 by myself the other day. And sometimes there have been 40 back there. And so I'm like, so what do you propose? And she said, well, I want to start limiting the number of kids that, that can go back into the kid zone. And I said, uh, no, 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 no. This is not the way the kingdom of God works. God doesn't say, I opened the door for a few of you to come through. But he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. And so I said, Sid, we're not going to limit the number of kids, but what we will do is we will champion volunteering back in kids zone. Will you turn to your neighbor and say, would you volunteer in kids zone? <laughs> Come on, say it, say it. I'm not hearing it. No, you would. Okay, I promised Sydney that I would get everyone, I would have everyone ask that question or be asked that question, so now you've been asked. Now, that might be, that might be God opening a door for you because if there's anything that I know about teaching is that the teacher learns more than the students. And so one way to grow in faith is to teach and to volunteer back there. Sometimes it's actually teaching. Sometimes it's just hanging out with the kids. I had some really fun pictures that uh, for some reason aren't here. But Elaine Gary will rise up and call me blessed because you looked really silly in one of them. Uh, so <laughs> but I thought it would be funny. But just imagine. Every, everybody laugh on three. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, that's what you would have done when you saw that picture. Um, Here's, here's another open door for us, and it's called KindFest. How many of you have heard about KindFest? Maybe you've seen this around town. And, you know, I'm, I'm all about kindness. The Bible encourages kindness. It's one of the one another's. Be kind to one another. So I'm all about, oh, look, look, I'm all about this. Um, but one of the things that, that happens is that you see the sign, be kind, but that's it. And one of our missions is to help people understand at a deeper level what kindness looks like. What does it smell like? What does it feel like? Does kindness ever make you feel uncomfortable? Let me ask you, does kindness ever make you feel uncomfortable? Yes. Being kind to someone can make you feel uncomfortable, right? See, some people don't believe that. And they think being kind is, oh, let's all have a party. You know, but, but what we're going to do is we, we've been invited because we have that sign out there and the person who runs this drives past every day. Uh, we've been invited to, to have a presence there. And so we're going to set up a tent. We're going to have our dude be kind sign, maybe uh, some, some t-shirts out there uh, for, for giveaways. Someone shared with me, they went to a, uh, a concert in town the other day. They grabbed the first black t-shirt they could find because they wanted to be cool. And it happened to be this. They, they put it on anyway. And, um, and, and they, they went and they said, there were like seven people who came up to me and said, where did you get that? That is such a cool shirt. So, yay, right? But... Let's take it the next step. And so the other thing that we're going to do is give away a book. We have a grant from a couple of people in the church who gave uh, a couple thousand bucks to buy a bunch of books. And we have some left over. And so what we want to do is invite the community into a community read. And how you can help, go to KindFest and make it seem like our booth is really cool and the place to hang out. <laughs> Because uh, we already have it staffed, but maybe you want to staff it. We're going to be there for six hours, but you can talk to Kathy Green, or uh, I believe Sydney Sandler is also engaged in this. So maybe you'll be on one side of the, uh, of the table or on the other, but maybe you want to be involved in helping lead a community uh, group just talking about it for, for one night. It's a powerful book, and it changes things. All right, another open door. Are, are, are you getting tired of this? I, I, I have a killer thing right at the end. It's so good. You wanna, you, you're going to want to hang on. Charlie, hang on. I know. I, this, this is getting long. There's a lot here, right? But here's the open door of... Do you recognize anybody there? Here, come on, come on, come on, come on. Stand up. Stand up. Here, let's... let's no, you have to be on the right side. Okay. 
Does this look like anyone you know? <laughs> anyway, so this is from last year's Trunk or Treat, and it is an open door. This is an open door of outreach into our community. I mean, check this out. We, there, there will be 500 people who cross onto our property to participate in this this year. Uh, you can see how many people are walking through the, the parking lot. Um, I don't know who's in the dragon. Um, but uh, down on the lower left-hand corner, Ed and Rita Larson brought the hay wagon over. And they, they, they did hay rides. That was the most popular thing. They, they were here. It started the moment they showed up until like half an hour after the thing was done. But one of the things we're looking for is an actor. And I need a Lazarus. Because one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take that, that hay wagon by the cemetery. And then someone's going to say, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus is going to come out out of the grave. And the little kids are going to go, ah! And they're going to have to be wearing diapers. But it, it, it will be very cool. Because they, it, no, I'm serious. Some, someone, it, it, was, it was shared at a staff meeting. They were, they were out in the community, and uh, they identified themselves as uh, being at River Hills Church. And the, the, the couple said, oh, you're talking about the church that, that has that cool thing at Halloween for our kids. See, it, it opens doors for other people. And this may be opening a door for you to participate. We need trunks. We want, we want to have 25 trunks this year from... Our people from, from the community, there'll be a place for you to sign up on the app, but consider doing a trunk. Charlie, you could bring over somebody else's wakeboard boat, you know? You don't have to bring your boat, just, just, just trailer something over. Yeah, I know you will. That'll be the height of the season, and you can do a trunk, you know, on one of those big boats that has a trunk on it. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Everybody clap if you want to see Charlie bring a boat over. But, but this opens up. This, 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 these, these are doors that open for people. The other day, I, I met someone's uh, mom back here, and I, I shared with her, you know why you're here today? Because your granddaughter came to an event here like 12 years ago. And because she came, your daughter came, and because your daughter came, you're here. And it may seem silly, but so many churches run away from Halloween. I am not going to let the devil have Halloween. So consider that as being an open door. Okay, last thing. An open door of unprecedented opportunity. This is not necessarily for us, but I want to show you what can happen when we have faith eyes to look for open doors. How many of you think that our church could, um, could, could handle an $80.5 million debt load? And, and anybody think that? $80 million. So, down in Tennessee, this, this, uh, this church not too much different from our church, had a, uh, had a guy approach the pastor and say, I feel that God is calling us to pay off the medical debt in our community. Now, this community uh, is uh, lower middle class. They have a, a high addiction rate in the community. There are a lot of needs in it. And that community, they, they, uh, they found out, was carrying an $80.5 million medical debt collectively. And you know what this church did? They paid it off. Listen to the story. Oh, church not unlike ours. And wait till you see the size of the congregation. Not unlike ours. They only have one service. We have two. 
Mark, thanks. New tonight, a local church is paying off millions of dollars in medical debt. The Altar Fellowship Church is changing many lives across the Tri-Cities. News Channel 11's Jayana Scurry reveals how the large effort was made possible. With this check, we are going to cancel $8.5 million of medical debt. Maddie Montgomery, senior pastor at the Altar Fellowship Church, cast the vision to help pay off the medical debt of thousands of people in the Tri-Cities. They partnered together with the national program to help forgive debts. The story meant so much like to our senior pastor, Pastor Maddie, because he was losing his father to cancer at the young age of eight. And while uh, he was on hospice care at home, a businessman from their town bought Christmas gifts for their entire family. And so that was an inspiration for him and has continued to be an inspiration for all of us. The Altar Fellowship was able to take up an offering of around $50,000 in one day, even unknowingly helping members of their own congregation. One of those was the dads of a teenage member, Carl Smith. He had some medical bills that we were just struggling to pay off and uh, he came to my room and was like, hey, the altar, your church just paid off my medical debt. And it was just such a blessing to find that out. Smith says he even donated to the cause, not knowing about his family's own debt. I only had a couple dollars in my pocket, but I knew that everything counted, so I gave the mo most I could. The Altar Fellowship wanted to help whoever they can in the community, regardless of who they are. This is just a beautiful example of what Jesus did for all of us by just paying the debt for people that many will never meet. And what a like relief of a burden to get that letter in the mail saying, your debt is forgiven, you don't owe anything else, and we love you. In Johnson City, Jayana Scurry, News Channel 11. How cool is that? Huh, come on. Seriously? How cool is that? I, I know, I know, you're, you're all like, I, I don't want to clap because I, I don't want to open the doors of my wallet right now. Um, that's, that's not where I'm going. I, I'm just saying that when, when, when we have our eyes open to, to doors that are opening for us and to take an 8.5, sorry for the miscalc there, just one zero, um, <laughs> $8.5 million debt and to buy it for $50,000 and change? That, that's what they did. They, they, they negotiated with, with those debt collectors and they bought the debt from them and then paid it off without ever asking for a dime. That's how it works. And uh, so, talk about something that's cool, right? So, I'll bet you, I'll bet you God is knocking on someone's, the door of their heart and their mind right now, thinking about how we could do this. So, last thing, the door of opportunity of communion. And let's go there. Communion represents another open door because through his sacrifice, Jesus opened the door of the opportunity that is called life, that is called abundant life, that is called eternal life, that is called a forgiven and grace-filled life. He opened that door. And so this morning, I want to encourage you as you're holding the elements of the bread and the cup that you would just prayerfully invite him to open up the eyes of our hearts to the doors that he might be opening for us. Because doors can be open and we can just kind of hide our eyes, right? We can't shut them, but we can hide from them. And we can refuse to walk through them. And I believe that this year God is going to open a number of doors that we haven't even talked about yet. And so let's ask God to cultivate in us an expectancy and an obedience for those and toward those open doors.
on the night he was betrayed, Jesus went out into the garden of Gethsemane and he, he prayed, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But if not, then thy will be done, not mine. Do you see the open door? God, close this door if it's possible because I don't want to have to walk through it. But it's your will. I'm going to walk through it if that's what you want me to do. And on that same night, just prior to that, he took this bread and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. words of that song are, he is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He's able, more than able, to do more than I can ask or say. He's able. He is able. He's able to open doors that no one can shut, and to shut doors that no one can open. And he walked through this one willingly. Let's partake together. In a similar manner, he took the cup after supper and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. If you will, this cup is the open door in my blood. He opened a way to life for each one of us. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me.
He's able to do more than you could ever ask or imagine. I started a conversation last week with someone who I believe it's going to be a life-transforming conversation. And it's been such a cool deal. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant, the open door in my blood. Let's commit ourselves to that as we partake together. Lord God, I thank you for open doors. And I pray, God, that you'll give us the wisdom and the insight to see them and the will and the boldness to walk through them. Boldness not in ourselves, but boldness in you. Because you are the one who opens, you are the one who carries us through, you are the one who sustains us, and you are the one who has something much bigger and better than we could ever imagine on the other side. And so, God, we thank you. We thank you for these tangible reminders of what you've done for us. Send us now from be, to, to be the church with those kind of eyes, looking for those opportunities of open doors. And we'll give you all the thanks in Jesus' name. And those who agreed said, Amen.